And the moment that I understood, oh, my brain has this physical trauma. It's not firing here. It's not firing there. How do I, what do, what can we do as a team to fire in different places? And then seeing how physically my brain was changing made a gigantic difference because I started seeing progress and I started feeling better. When you first came to see me, you were a bit of a mess. <laughs> I think I've been a mess for a very long time. <laughs> but yes, I was, I was. And what I wrote was calm your nervous system and get out of this fight or flight. Mm -hmm. When did that start? Well, I guess it clearly in my mind something that i can remember obviously is the death of my father i think that from there on it's been since i've been 12 years old and but, that was unexpected all of a sudden i mean i remember everything perfectly it was a sunday morning when i was it was a few days after my birthday and yeah my father had a motorcycle accident and i was turning you know a preteen and i was so rocked by the by the accident that I just went into complete fight or flight mode. And ever since, I've never been able to come out of it. And that's been part of our work yeah. to get you to calm down your nervous system <laughs> and not be so hard yeah. on yourself. One of the big traumas is partly because of the concussion you had surgery on your nose. Yeah. And uh, that just set off a firestorm. Yeah, really. and I think that I, you know, it's not very public and people don't know about this, but I had a lot of trauma to the face really young. So, like, obviously, you, we talked about this one. At a one year old, I hit my head and popped it open and then broke my nose in five pieces at 11 is pretty brutal and then got trauma into my cheek too i like hit a, a glass table really young too which now i have a cute dimple but it's a, a scar and then sp split my chin really young as well so i had a lot of trauma and then i got attacked by a dog when i was seven that was actually a big deal big trauma yeah big trauma almost got killed they by worried a you might lose your arm yeah they thought the i was dog losing my arm rabies. Dog had rabies, almost lost my arm because it bit me right where, obviously right here, you can see it. Um, it hits the bone where they said if it would have been a bit a little lower, I would have had to. Well, my goodness. Yeah, so a lot You're of physical sort of trauma. Miracle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my mom used to joke about the fact that I, she was like, for your birthday, I'm going to give you a room at a hospital. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> it was ridiculous. I lived, she was also joking, like, you fall standing, like it's, it's I've never seen something that's like that. actually common for ADD kids which is they what made people three think. to four times the amount of medical services is not correct ADD kids. here's a healthy scan and spec basically tells us three things Good activity, too little, or too much. Mm -hmm. and then my job is to balance it. When we look at your scan, and we did it twice, mm -hmm. once at rest, once when you concentrate, well, I could actually see the concussion in your brain that impacted wow. your right temporal lobe. So this often reads social cues or reads the intentions of others. So if I don't fix that, it'll end up with some relationship problem. And I did feel a huge difference after I had the accident. I think it was, um, you know, at that age, I had such a strong, it was, the impact was so intense. And I thought it was just part of aging or the transition from teenager to, you know, kid from, to teenager. But I remember physically feeling 
like I slowed down, like I, I couldn't process things the right way. I couldn't, I thought it was a, con- a situation of confusion and just the age within itself, but and I then guess, losing your dad uh, yeah, on top of it. It's yeah. Like, so I didn't think it so was connected people to won't the accident. Think about the accident. Yeah. But here it is. I mean, there's only one thing that gives you this decrease, and that's trauma. Wow. Y- your emotional brain is on fire. And at the time, the time you were clearly depressed. Yeah. Uh, but everything else is sleepy. Mm-hmm. But when you concentrate, my whole brain. Your so whole just... brain. And so here you get stuck on things. You get the same thought in your head over and over. Um, you can be anxious. But this is it's an interesting area of the brain called the anterior insular cortex. You just feel awful. Mm-hmm. It's like angst. It's like, I don't like how I feel. And my guess is since I've been seeing it, we Decreased calm it. that down. Yeah. Um, but this diamond pattern shows up uh, with emotional trauma. You can clearly have an emotional trauma pattern in your brain mm-hmm. um, when you try to concentrate. And so... Have you ever met any any person in the public eye that doesn't have emotional trauma? <laughs> That's a good question. Not the ones that come see yeah. me. Yeah, <laughs> it sounds, sounds like... They wouldn't. Well, there's a whole psychology of fame. Yeah, it's. I right. think that no one really ever understands how nuanced and complex it is to be a public person. And I think that that's something that I've always found fascinating about the human experience because we've sort of normalized the coexistence of humans plus fame as one. And it's not the experience is completely different as a human being. It's, it's, it's like outer body experience. And I don't think that you could ever empathize or understand how that feels unless you're experiencing it. You're experiencing it with other people. And I think that's why so many people within the public eye sort of gravitate towards each other, because at the end of the day, there's a, there's a world there's a black hole that we only understand because we've only been in there. And yeah, and it's crazy how it impacts you, not just emotionally, but physically. And I, I just don't think that the brain is designed to digest what that ex- entails. You know, I don't, I truly believe that the brain does not fully comprehend the human experience of being in the public eye. This past year has been one of your busiest years, right? It just seems like we're always trying to catch each other between movies. Yeah, I mean, this is the first time we meet in person, which is crazy after a year of working together. We've had sort of an AI relationship. Yes, (laughs) but it's been, you know, it's been such a journey. And part of me finding you in the moment that I found you, I think, is a part of why my year has been so busy as well because I think that I I I don't think one thing works without the other. If I wasn't healthy or in a good place, I couldn't be working back to back the way that I am. And I don't think that I would be getting those jobs if I wasn't in a healthy state. And so it's one and the other sort of come with each other. And I really, you know, we worked so hard. I mean, we were in, I was in New Zealand we would find times and wherever I was in around the world. And in order to keep me on track and keep myself healthy, especially with the amount of load, the load of work that I was having. I mean, I did not stop for two years in a row at all. And something that, you know, really triggered me finding you was I was coming off a job that I played someone that was like really struggling mentally and then went into a harder job even after that, where I had to really sort of lose my mind within the project. And we wanted to make sure to keep my health and my brain healthy and balanced while I was going through those emotions while working. And 
you know, it's challenging sometimes to maintain yourself healthy while going through those emotions because it feels really real in your body. Your body doesn't recognize that you're performing or you're acting something that people well, don't the understand. One in New Zealand, you were playing someone in outer space, mm -hmm. right? So it was fairly isolating. Yeah. So I was spending Intense. all the time alone. Yes. And I was in a dark room all the time. And, you know, funny thing that I don't think people know is like, when you're an actor and you're experiencing emotions, your body doesn't recognize that it's fake. Right. Your brain doesn't recognize that it's fake. So your body is going through such level of stress and it's affecting you. And you can't separate those feelings, even though cohesively I can, your body can't. So perfect example, I was shooting a movie called Ambulance at the time with, with Michael Bay. And I was dealing with this stressful situation where I played a paramedic and I was trying to save someone's life throughout the whole time. And I was having a panic attack and going through a lot of emotions. And throughout those three months, I lost my period. My body just couldn't cope. My, I, my body, my hormones completely unbalanced. I was sick. I couldn't recover. And it was because I was putting my body in such state and stress and just driving them. It seems so funny. You're watching a movie. You don't think about these things. Our bodies are really getting that impact. So, you know, ultimately, I wanted to maintain my health and with you while doing these jobs. And I didn't want to find myself stepping away from those jobs because I could physically couldn't take it. So what has been the most helpful? I think discovering to a deep understanding of, of what my brain is doing. I think that I've always experienced more of a traditional type of therapy, but for the hyper activity that my brain has, I obviously always wonder what was physically happening with my brain and having a deeper understanding of both physical trauma, emotional trauma, how that's impacted me physically. Um, and then how to undo that while, you know, really getting, the right medication, the right type of therapy, the right type of sleep and diet and all the things that we've sort of correlated in one has helped me to digest more because I believe that a lot of people find themselves in this hole of not understanding where to start or where it's coming from. And, and the, I, I think that therapy is incredible, but it needs to be accompanied accompanied with with more information and and I think that ultimately I always felt a lot of sadness of not comprehending why therapy wasn't fully working for me by itself and the moment that I understood oh my brain has this physical trauma it's not firing here it's not firing there how do I what do what can we do as a team to fire in different places? And then seeing how physically my brain was changing made a gigantic difference because I started seeing progress and I started feeling better. Supplements. Because mm -hmm. you're actually not taking any medicine, right? No, I'm not a medic. No, I'm just on supplements with you. We we started with Pristique. We started with Pristique because it increases both serotonin and norepinephrine. Mm -hmm. So it can actually help. It can help mood and obsessiveness. It's a little bit more stimulating. Mm -hmm. um, what are we going to do with supplements going forward? Well, we're going to keep taking them. <laughs> so which ones are you consistent? Well, we different. We were definitely on Neuralink, which I saw a huge difference. Um, you had me in three different ones, though, but we were going to change. So I had you on the vegan mm -hmm. omega three mm -hmm. and, and the gummies and the theanine gummies. Mm -hmm. And did we try saffron? No, we were going to try it now. Yeah, let's try it. What I wanted to focus is this second chapter of my life as a woman and being able to be as healthy as I could physically be or mentally um, to hopefully become a mother one day, you know, and, and be the best version of that because that's so. And if you're kind to yourself, you like can be kind Natalie to children. and I were just posting, <laughs> we just made a video. The number one most important thing for parents 
it's to be a good parent to yourself. Mm -hmm. Because if you're not a good parent to yourself, it's going to leak. I've I've learned that. I've seen it. You don't want to leak. Yeah. I mean, there's, it's impossible, right? To be the best parent. We're always going to make mistakes, but definitely what you just said is what makes a difference. You're going to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. Do you learn from them or do you beat yourself up? Mm -hmm. Like I have this wonderful Olympic athlete, a tree. Um, Every day she wins or she learns. She came in, she sat on that couch and she said, if I don't win a gold medal, my children will hate me. <laughs> your children aren't going to care. They're going to care if you spend time with them. Yeah. They're going to care if you're nice to them. They're yeah. not going to care about the stupid men. Yeah. <laughs> so. But at the end of the day, you know, we're so hard on ourselves. And I think that that's what I've learned with you most than anything is it doesn't matter, you know, if you come in and your brain's not the best version. I, I remember the unveiling of my brain was a scary thing because I was ready for it to be. A, <laughs> just a crater of holes and and the electricity and and we're so judgmental on ourselves we we put so much pressure on ourselves to this perfection and this version and being able to be like uh-huh i'm great or you know or i'm not so bad and the, at the end of the day it doesn't matter if you the that there or not there you can get there and i think that's what made me feel really hopeful and and feel it filled me with purpose when I met you because it didn't matter what state my brain was. And when I saw that electricity in my brain all over the place, it actually sort of sued me because this never you knew ending, it was there. Yeah. Cause it was this big it. elephant in the room that I couldn't comprehend. And I finally had an answer to my questions and it was the beginning of a path to fulfillment and happiness and growth and even in the hard times of the growth it's made me feel really happy because even though it's really hard in the moment it's really tough and there's a lot of tears and a lot of stress and a lot of hearing a lot of things you know you you also get such a crazy hit of dopamine because your body's realizing okay I can process this okay you can move forward and and it becomes addicting and in the best way possible you let those addictions and all those sort of regroup themselves into the positive and so all that sort of um addiction to those thoughts have become addiction to those thoughts in order to get to the positive versus lingering in the negative and that's why this has been such an amazing journey with you and i'm just excited to where we're gonna get because it's just the beginning it's only one year and we've done a lot of progress i i think (laughs) 